We talked about the Vive Cosmos, we talked about the Vive Cosmos Elite, the official transformation to make the tracking better, but there was a part of the puzzle missing. Many of you were interested about the Cosmos possibility to connect wireless to the PC, to finally be able to have a proper PC VR experience without cables. Hey, Ty here, so welcome to the VR Tech channel, and HTC decided to send over the Vive wireless adapter for the Vive Cosmos. So let's check out the last piece of the puzzle together to see if it's actually enough to change the game and why, unfortunately or not, the old market is not moving in this direction. Let's get into it. As some of you might know, I already tried the Vive wireless adapter in the past, so we're not gonna go through an extensive unboxing and setup step by step because the box is pretty much the same with the addition of the Vive port Infinity that I'm dropping the members chat, so check it out and thanks so much guys for the support over there. But going back, you're gonna find also an additional battery, this time 21 watt, plus the attachment for the Vive Cosmos. Putting that on the headset is pretty easy, you can just follow the instruction directly over there, change the cable and put the Vive wireless adapter on top. What I did different though, I put the battery directly on the headset because I didn't want a very long cable going to my back and well, so it's here, everything is contained over there and while it doesn't look super fancy, well, it's pretty functional indeed. So first of all, the Vive wireless adapter will work on a 60 gigahertz connection that is much more powerful than the regular Wi-Fi connection in your homes, bringing much more bandwidth with it. The downside is that instead of a five gigahertz connection that will pass even through walls, the short waves of this connection would bounce on surfaces. Even a piece of paper could ruin the experience potentially. That's why it's recommended to mount the transmitter very high up so nothing would get on the way, even your own body. The only issue here that to connect the transmitter to the PC, you just have a two meters cable. And so that means that you have your PC, for example, on the floor, well, it's gonna be very hard to reach a very high position with the transmitter, of course. Not that it's not gonna work if it's not high enough, but you may experience some uh, glitches or artifacts. So just to let you know. Now, one of the things that I noticed when I tried it back in the day is that this thing was getting very hot. I can even bought a laser thermometer to check the temperature out. And the nice thing that now there is at least an additional padding in the box, helping to get rid of the heat before getting to your skull. Not that the heat is not happening anymore, but at least you have uh, some protection over there. Now, the receiver sits pretty well in the back of the Halo strap, and what you have to do is just to remove the long proprietary cable, change it with the shorter version because yes, it's wireless, but we still need cables. And then go into the options in the Vive console and toggle the Vive wireless adapter settings because of course you already have the Vive console if you own already the Vive Cosmos. The other cable will go to the battery, of course, that you should put in your pocket and the cable is long enough for it. But as I said, I mounted directly on the headset over here. So uh, I have a shorter cable there and uh, well, nothing gets in the way when I use it. It's not a super heavy battery, by the way, and that means that this is small battery and that's the big issue over here that the battery life with the battery included in the package is around two hours and takes ages to recharge so well this is very disappointing it's the most disappointing part of it but let's talk about the experience now because of course it's the most important thing at the end of the day with the resolution of 1440 by 1700 each eye i was expecting the cosmos to struggle during the gameplay expecting to see artifacts and having lower frame rates in the headset than with the cable but for my surprise that wasn't really the case uh, the experience felt comfortable and flawless the image reproduction was on point and yeah, nothing to report over there. I even tried a very dark level in Half-Life Alyx, that is a new mod they just got out and it's like absolutely terrifying. And uh, well, the black didn't have any weird artifacts like we used to uh, when we use wireless headsets and uh, everything was pretty clean and uh, good. Impressed. But because of course, there's always a but, two hours really felt not enough. The time that you are getting in the game, well, you're out of battery and uh, you have to stop. You have to plug in the battery again and wait around six hours to be recharged. And that's really not a viable way if you are planning to have longer 
playing sessions or just get immersed in your game for a little while. And while I love the idea and the possibility, I also struggle having to recharge the headset every time, every day, to don't find myself with a dead object, because most of the time the battery is not just there when needed. Well, wireless VR has some big advantages over the wired VR. I don't find the cable an issue in regular games, but if you are in a VR chat, for example, uh, if you dance in VR, if you use uh, full body tracking, well, that might be a real deal. Also in some arcade games, lately I'm playing Tower Tag, and well, there you need to move with your own body uh, around this pillar in your platform while playing, and not having a cable that tangle around, well, it's a big deal, gives you much more freedom and is much more enjoyable and immersive to play in that way. But if instead you play simulators and such, well, I think the answer is pretty obvious. You don't really need a wireless VR because you're not going to be able to do a full race, then your battery is going to be out pretty much. Now, I think that the tech behind this is pretty amazing, but if you ask yourself why the other manufacturers didn't really jump in wireless VR like Vive did already from a while, well, that's because of a 60 gigahertz connection that is a great on a certain point, but at the same time, it uses a lot of power, power generate heat, and heat is hard to tame. So this is a great solution for now, but seems like the future in moving toward Wi-Fi 6E, for example, that use much less energy than even a Wi-Fi 5, and at the end of the day, gives enough bandwidth to have a good connection and a good wireless transmission over there. I made a video about Wi-Fi 6 over here, by the way, if you want to check it out, uh, we go really in detail so you can understand also what is the pros and cons even better with this connection compared to the other ones. So, well, you have it. Now, going back to the Vive wireless adapter, this will be $299 uh, without the kit for the Vive Cosmos that is going to be $59 more, bringing the ultimate kit of the Vive Cosmos, like uh, the best that you can get right now, is an experience to around $1,200. That is pretty steep. Of course, you still have, as we said in the review, for generation controllers and Lighthouses 1.0. So just be aware of it. And this is for sure a very high price to swallow. It's even hard to just thinking about it because this headset has still some flaws and we talked about it. But if you want wireless VR and with high resolution, well, this is the kind of only option that you have on the market right now and probably from a while because we didn't hear anything yet from the Rift part or from the Index part and stuff like that because they're probably waiting for a technology a little more useful. They can use the battery better and you can use it for longer time sessions. Now, I don't want to really compare it to virtual desktop. We talked about it in the other video that I said you can find over here and it's great, but the quality that you have here with the image is much better than the quality that you have on virtual desktop, for example. So they're not really comparable. Uh, this is a PC VR experience, like full fledged on the other side. It's a workaround. Works very well and I really enjoy it, to be honest, because I can use the Quest also for other stuff, but well, it's a workaround. It's not really something made for it and you can tell. And to really answer the fact you should really consider it or not, well, ask yourself if the cable is bothering you that much that you're willing to spend $350 for the Vive wireless adapter if you already have the Vive Cosmos because the full package, well, will be pretty expensive indeed. So it's not for everyone and it shouldn't be. VR with cable is still pretty fine. Many games are built to be played with cables, so they're really aware of like not making you turn so many times, but if you want complete freedom, well, this is an option, but you trade the freedom of the cable with the freedom from the battery. So well, be aware of it and uh, you're gonna do the right choice. For me personally, I never really found the cable a big issue and for sure I'm not ready to trade a cable for two hours in battery life, having to charge it every time, having to remember to charge it every time to use it. And uh, so, well, for me, cable is still the way, but for sure this is super interesting and with a Vive Cosmos like this, uh, kind of feels very nice. I will use it more, but yeah depends on the game for sure. So think about it, which games are you playing? Is that enough for you? Consider it or not.
But here you have it, guys. This was my review. I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, you found it useful because I had the opportunity to try it once more. And well, my idea didn't change that much, even if for sure it's a good item. At the end of the day, it's built very well. The technology behind it, it's great. And uh, by the way, if you need more battery life, you can buy different batteries and there are anchor batteries that still work pretty well and give you much more battery life. But well, you still have to think that every now and then you have to detach and put a new battery and stuff like that. So uh, really depends on you again. But anyway, guys, to conclude, if you liked the video, like, if you didn't like the video, dislike, subscribe to the channel for more about VR tech. And if you love the channel, wanna support the channel, well, we have the t-shirts down there, the back to VR t-shirts of the sticker or the tier uh, t-shirt that are very interesting you should check out. And also thanks to the supporters that we said at the beginning, uh, you can join the channel down there as well to support the channel that we do some giveaways and stuff. And you have gonna have a little tag close to your name that it's pretty cool indeed. But that's really up to you. That will help the channel a lot, but not forcing, it's just there uh, if you wanna help. And again, like, dislike, subscribe, and I see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, ciao.